to put it together we learn you know chemistry physics areas of discipline compulsory if you look at the inflexible monodiscipline focus earlier we used to have only restricted to their own areas with a little sprinkling of humanities social sciences but with little more flexibility we have electives coming into the picture the courses became little more flexible <coughs> and if you look at chemical engineering as an example this is all the the uh, profession as a whole education as a whole chemical engineering started as industrial chemistry then you started with unit process and unit operations and the theory started looming large chemical engineering science which broke the whole thing into material band balances transport phenomena transfer transport and reactive processes and a whole lots of other things coming like process control biochemical engineering environmental engineering etc molecular biology and computers started becoming important and management principles also became part of the engineering curriculum so there has been evolution from the basic industrial chemistry to how they looked at it from a operations uh, process point of view to the science point of view and dissecting the science into various components and trying to structure a curriculum blended with other many other enabling subjects to make this curriculum very rich there are concerns are aired very frequently in us that our engineering graduates there are concerns that our engineering graduates do not respond to the change of the changing world scenario and the rapid developments in technology and their impact on industry there is globalization of business uh environmental has become an important issue with lot of technologies being developed IP is an important issue. Technologies are getting a solid faster, and new technologies are coming with the current turn for nano, bio, etc. <coughs> work environment has also changed, and now the engineers have to be dynamic, have to work in a dynamic and learning environment. To put all this into a neat picture, we have the. If you look at the status of engineering education, we have to have the knowledge explosion on one side. rapid technology development competitive nature of business societal concerns environmental concerns dynamic environment and ipr potential issues view of educational needs that existing education system is not flexible enough broad enough to with the required management skills multidisciplinary skills and learning skills. If you look at engineering education and look at stakeholders, I designed a vector known as APEC vector. APEC is aspirations, P is perceptions, E is expectations, C is concerns. So I put APEC for faculty and students because there is something individualistic in this. In an organization. the aspirations is little more collective aspirations so i thought it is no aspirations are got into the administration because they are slowly tied up with the faculty and student so aspirations sort of crept into the administration but i put aspirations only for the the two individualistic oriented <coughs> entities in the whole educational system government society professional world and global community groups so all have a perception of engineering education and If you look at student his perceptions is drawn from what he sees from the professional world what he his own perception of what is engineering education is and what is the possibility the role of an engineer in society when you go to any counseling and i used to do iit counseling lot of students had perceptions about a branch in fact one student when i told him that you take civil engineering he says sir what is the use of civil engineering <coughs> just building some not very impressive there are no impressive engineering there and he also gave me a very alarming status sir in a particular iit lot of civil engineering graduates are not employed they are not getting placement so why should you run a curriculum a young youngster telling you and counseling you why should i learn civil engineering who convinced me why civil engineering should be an important uh, profession for me i am nothing against civil engineering but i battled my way rightly so to say the things which a civil engineer can do
So perceptions can be deceptive. As students, we always look at the students' view because we are always here for students. Their aspirations can be individualistic. They have profile of a profession. They say that uh, computer science, sitting in Kassit, it is uh, politic to talk well about computer science and uh, in, uh, information technology. They say computer science is a dream profession for me. I expect this to happen. My profile and the quality of education, what are the demerits and merits of various professional avenues. You know, do I want to be an engineer? Do I want to be a manager? So they have a perception. And they also have an expectation that the education that they, they get would help them to realize their aspirations. They are concerned again that I am going into a competitive area, will I survive? So this APEC vector, which one has to encompass in looking at each of those stakeholders in our analysis. So, engineering education has to manage multiple stakeholders. So, what do we do? We can harmonize their perceptions. We can reconcile their ex uh, expectations. N nurture aspirations of key, key constituents. It's politic for me to talk about students and faculty because they think they have experience because they are the people who are going to be deeply involved in educating the students. Foster inner synergistic inter interaction between the stakeholders. Minimize, soften divergent positions of stakeholders. Can we do this? Is an important question. A case for systems view of engineering education will be that since we have multiple stakeholders, multiple perspectives, different contextual roles of stakeholders, distinctive character. The characters of central entities in the system, like faculty, students, <coughs> employer, myriad influences which affect the education system because it's a human learning and so many other factors. Complex causal relationship model: If I do this, will it help the student? If I do this, will I help the student? And also defining policy, actions, and goals. Systems approach provides a framework because it can look at systems, we can look at the whole process from a structural, functional, behavioral aspects. You can look at interactions between various components. You can look at causal aspects, what is the policy, what is the action, what are the results of that action. And one can do an artful decomposition. To solve a problem, a, a rigorous decomposition may be difficult in problems so complex like this. We could do an artful decomposition of the problem based on structural, temporal, functional aspects. And we can, above all, we can look at multiple scenarios. If you look at a philosophical peg on which we could hang, which could hang this, put this engineering education, there are lots of philosophers like Leibniz, Locke, Kant, Hegel, and Singer. This thought came to me because I was doing a project for Honeyman on design of a decision support system. So I thought everything should have a philosophy. So, philosophic angle, uh, various philosophers like Lebian, Leibniz, Locke, Kant, Hegel, Singer, they all propose various philosophies and looking at complex organization system. And Singer is the man who looked at the most complex system, which he called the wicked system. They are the so hard soft systems in which a lot of complex relationships are there. It permits a holistic view, can analyze complex social issues. Develop a broad envelope for analysis, encompassing all relevant objects. You put everybody, you put all stakeholders into your into your framework for analysis, and understanding the interpret interacting influences and generate multiple perspectives. In fact, there is an excellent paper by Courtney on how the decision support system can was helpful in looking at some of the civic projects they handled. I thought maybe we should try to look at Singer's organization model as a potential value a model on which we could analyze engineering education as a system, as a complex system. Complex and as Singer says, wicked systems. Wicked not because of the personalities and not because of the character of the problem. So if you look at basis for decision making, we have to look at the society. For some reason, the color has become green. Because I think accidentally I put green, but in society we would look at a green environment. So by accident it came, happened, but it is 
It's quite providential and happens to be in that killing. Because later on I get to say something about it. Government, employment segment, I put the whole thing together, defense and everything together. Global community, academy, industry, uh, student community, academic community, regulators, educators, professional bodies, and I should have put alumni also here, seen so many alumni here, but I forgot to put that box there. So assume that there is a box of alumni also in this. So if you are planning body, which looks at education, adopt a Singarian model and look at the viewpoints of all the stakeholders here and see whether what would be the profile of a graduate, what would be the education problem, uh, program which will best fit this particular profile of a graduate. So true to Singarian model, Singarian models and nobody is supreme. Everybody has a view, everybody has got a solution. So, Singarian model comes out with multiple perspectives and multiple models. You get a sample of this. A socially conscious man will say, I want an education which is socially beneficial, affirmative action. There are some other work to it which I will not mention here. Industry, where you know, there is a professional accent. Employability, a very dangerous term. In view of the IT situation, driver of economic growth. Economic view is, I want strong research focus. I don't want that. I want to do something creative. I want some flexibility in the case of academic freedom. And I want to be in the state of the art. Government would be looking at manpower development, self-reliance, societal benefit, and contribution to economy. I don't include the political dimensions here because I think the most memorial lecture we leave those things out. Student, to put it succinctly, a pathway to successful career. Globally, they are looking at manpower resource and how we can contribute to the engineering, the products of engineering education contribute to economy. Alumni, I read the Ram Kelker's uh, newspaper report. There is a world class image and try to preserve that brand name all the time. So that was the Ram Kelker's message which I sort of put in here into this. Thing. To, we can also look at fusion of multiple perspectives which is quite consistent living, Singarian view. I happen to read the statement of Devesha. I think it's why yes sir, I made a mistake maybe in the second V. Huh? V. I think when I looked at it, I think I made a mistake in that. He says, I have a triple, triple bottom line, you know, bottom line, triple bottom line mantra, economic, societal and environment and greening industry. He talked about the greening industry and a need for long-term mission, which essentially means that you know, look, if you have a long-term mission, each forces will accept their own influence on engineering education. You need to have an overall system, you have to look at engineering education, not a selective view of a stakeholder. Now, question comes, you have made all these statements, what is the evidence that these things I confess there are no studies, study reports on analysis of a total educational system which encompasses all this. I, this is a proposition I have put. But systems approach has been used for some component of engineering education. There are an interesting project done by someone in US. How teaching and research, how they affect each other and how it can be enhanced by using a system engineering system model. Educational process as a manufacturing system, which is a little hard to accommodate all the things that can happen. <laughs> and there was one, one paper. Another paper was improving the retention rate. Because in India we have got lots of people, 3, three lakh students, right, for uh, BTEC uh, entrance. In US and other places, in, especially in Europe, there are problems of numbers. So how to improve the retention rate? So study the entry characteristics of student and align the program which will see that the students stay within the program for a longer period. If you look at the how people have reacted to this, look at recent reviews of engineering education. We have the Ramarao committee. McKenzie report, which is confidential, but I had I had confiscated a copy of it. Abbott, USA. Bologna process, European Union are concerned of dwindling numbers in engineering education. They have formed together in a consortium to look at the mobility of students across the European Union. 
An interesting initiative was done by Boeing and the chemical engineering community, not the outdone, had the 40 years in chemical engineering initiative. And in India itself, we had the Vaila Ravi Committee, which is, I don't know whether they submitted the report. It's, uh, now, some of them may have used the system due to very extent, especially the US Abbott, I particularly single out as one which has used the system's uh, approach very consistently. The Boeing initiative is interesting because it brought a lot of things, people together. If you look at the educational process as a system, we have a student population, <laughs> a screening process which could be J E or C E T or anything, which brings up the student intake, and we have a knowledge transfer skill development process. I mean now I put everything into systems. Uh, an educational process which does the uh, skill transfer process. You get graduates and systems view will always have you have to characterize the input. You have to characterize the output, you have to measure the performance and give feedback for adjustment of, uh, or improvement of education program or improvement of the screening process. This is the loop which is important. Now, the, can this loop be managed? And we have another interesting note. Now, if you look at the student intake, knowledge transfer, skill development, and educational program. We look at statistics. You have a student with a broad frequency distribution. I am trying to push this to a level where you got a higher level. Their, their, at their accomplishments go to a higher level than narrow band. This is how we, we in manufacturing, if I have to take a system view of manufacturing, so you have to reduce quality variation, bring them around to a mean. So one statistical view of engineering education will be transferred to a narrow band of high attainers. That's one of the goals. Can I take a broadband input? Can I push them into a band of narrow band of high attainers is one of the possibilities. Look at the entire engineering education, student intake, infrastructure administration support, graduate profile, model curriculum, we have all options, dual degree. MTech Bologna process model, cooperative model, and recently somebody has put a transdisciplinary model. Curriculum structure and curriculum vary from continent to continent, IIT to IIT, and to some extent. And now learning has become much wider. I mean, directed learning, self learning, collaborative learning, experiential <coughs> learning, project based learning, and problem based learning. In fact, lots of people are working on each of these modalities. So the and, and assessment which looms as an important element. So the whole system is now in place. Now the question is, which model I will choose? How will I optimally package the knowledge and skill transfer using judiciously the tools available, the, the capabilities the available of all these learning modes and technology being a, a supportive agent to all these things. I uh, looking at the chemical engineering curriculum and trying to find out how I can, within the limited time, how I can pack more into the curriculum. And found some ways of doing it, but I think uh, this is not the occasion because there are very few only a few chemical engineers and this is not the idea here. So it's an idea of how I use the available resources and try to get the best model which gives the knowledge transfer as efficient as possible. Uh, the implicit systems approach is a review. They started with the review process involving all stakeholders. ABET is the accreditation body for engineering and technology in the US. I like their approach because that's why I'm trying to put it together. A review process involving stakeholders. Listing of weakness in current education scenario, which I already explained earlier. A proclamation of an engineering criteria, which is the main thing. Engineering criteria have guidelines of program formulation, outcome, curriculum formation, how do you measure the outcome, what are the protocols for assessment of outcome, what are the resource requirements, and use of, use of assessment feedback for program correction. They are going to great details of how it can be done so that when the accreditation body come to the university, they have to strictly look at various protocols, only they will get satisfied. A far cry from 
the way it happens here, because in our educational institutions, that started with very little screen. Now, I look at only the, the, the top few things are all general things. Functional and multidisciplinary schemes, that's one of the professional ethical responsibility. Communicate effective impact of engineering solutions in a global social context. Engage in lifelong learning. Knowledge of contemporary education. These are some of the special qualities they expect out of this people. And learning also, there are a lot of skill requirements, communication skill, etc. The important thing what they have done is in their assessment procedure. Our assessment procedure, a student write an exam, you go off. Their assessment procedure creeps into the curriculum. You explain how in your curriculum these things and these outcomes which I indicated earlier will be realized by your program. If they look at the curriculum and say if it is an interdisciplinary component of learning, how is that in your curriculum? It's, so they have to write a course matrix and show places where these attributes will be actually satisfied. So deep insight into how the curriculum is framed, how the learning methodology is done, how the exam assignment all are evaluated as per some criteria. Uh, internal, external surveys, interviews, and to add to IIT students often off remark, I learned more from hostels than from, from department. I put that unstructured learning to humor the IIT experiment. They say we learn more from hostels, so that is an unstructured learning which I put there. How much of it is true is open to debate, but that's so the assessment process gives you little metrics. And to go further ahead, quality control charts, you must have heard of quality control charts. What they have done is they have, they have adapted the quality control, normal quality control manufacturing measures to assess these. And there are some 21 ways in which they assess these, these heterogeneous kind of input which comes. Going at a different approach. They start with a round table for enhancing engineering education. Uh, it had workshop, round table discussion. They had an actual implementation model. They came up with the desired attributes of an engineer. What are the desired attributes of an engineer? And they had a model engineering program. It's an interesting paper. Even the reference I got the actual review. So basically what they have done is it is interesting, they got all these people together, the professional societies, ASSC, ABET, which is accreditation, IU, and formed what is known as IUG, RE, and looked at the funding and program development, etc. into a, so it's a very active collaboration, and they have written some implementation model, etc. And they came up also with the profile of an engineer, which is again interesting. You look at things that they are expecting. Uh, history. They want a history of technology. And I, after I went through, and I did some homework when I was doing the study of systems in the, the history is very important. Because some of the beginnings of engineering education came essentially with the theory of how we have to look at blood circulation. I mean, what are, they say that the beginning of engineering was studying the blood circulation which happened in human beings. And you know, communication, everybody talks of ethical standard. And ability as such cannot uh, to, uh, to adapt to rapid and major changes. Curiosity and the desire to learn, I mean, this is very important. Lifelong learning is the most important thing. And curiosity and desire to learn is <coughs> and profound understanding of teamwork. I mean, these are some of their prescriptions. But basically, the idea here is. Engineering education, industry and stakeholders are deeply involved in this exercise as a total system. Now, definition of outcome, that means the output of an educational program. Confidence of outcome code should be, summary from this is, confidence of outcome code can go beyond academic, academic uh, attainments. And if I extend it further, Outcome should be different for different classes of graduates. They have only done it for the bachelor degree, undergraduate. We have to look at how we can 
define an outcome. Idea is that we can add a brand value then to UG, PG, and PhD students. Outcomes so defined, academic attainment, skills, attribute, awareness, effect in our learning research program, weakness and deficiencies. Could be used in the overall assessment of the institution. And this, if you have this assessment measures, we can even assess how good an institution is. I am coming to back to that later. Now, to get this further, if you look at the assessment can tell how good that program is. That's what ABAT does. We can also get a total graduate, graduate profile, which can give you better employment. I'll give you some example of this. And under PG students can say, with the profiling, can I say that I am much better than a UG student? So, I can profile the PG UG <coughs> student to show normally industry is a we are only interested in. We talk, why don't you take my M tax student? They will say, five, ten years ago, don't talk to me about B tax student, M tax student, B tax student. I will give you only M tax student. So, we have the dialogue. So, with this kind of a profiling, maybe I can differentiate the values of a UG. And sometimes we can even challenge the employer as It has happened once a PhD student was with whom I was advised the multinational company said he is not good. He is not fit for her. My student was in that company. Somehow he valued rightly or wrongly my judgment quite well. Now. So he kept on insisting with the company. Professor Madhavan says he has all these qualities. So I told ultimately, you have seen this man over a telephonic interview from US on a highly research post. But I have seen this man for five years. I mean, I know exactly what his potentials are. So you better, these are his, his values are not stated in his uh, book. So after that, he got employment and he is doing very well in that company. So it uh, can be used even as a tool to reconcile employer assessment with our own internal assessment. An interesting thought. Somebody can ask, why don't we capture the input also for the academic program? We only look at grade score, this one. The, can you also uh, assess them for various attributes which they have? In that respect, and I have written all the attributes. In that respect, I have dropped a tiles up in the report. Ingredients to create an institute. He says that if I tell you the ingredients, there are the ingredients to make an institute. So if we can profile the input, maybe I get the ingredients to make the MC on all this. How good that uh, profiling is, I don't know, but I just thought that Times of India report which came only yesterday. I thought it was interesting because look at the input profile and try to position. So what it says now is a system philosophy is undercurrent in structuring the whole educational process which involves knowledge of core discipline, problem solving, how to put the vast amount of information into a uh, assimilable form, the instructional learning style, information literacy, all this together becomes uh, engineering education. And the education has also an eye on employment arena. Not all people have told the ABET line. MIT led initiative said, look, we are looking at an emerging generation of engineering and they said we have to look at it for tomorrow, engineers of tomorrow. So they have, they have said that they have not looked at all this social. They said we have to look at all systems that are nano, micro, mega and meso scale dimensions. I must look at them in that. So my engineers will be able to look at the minutest of process which take place at the atomic level. At the same time they will be able to look at large scale systems and do their analysis. So they are trying to restructure their curriculum to a more a different a drastic restructuring of the curriculum. They said to 2010 that curriculum they want to implement. Industry has not spoken much about it. You know, I thought there will be some strong reaction from the industry. I have not seen too much of a report about this. So it might come into force and in this there will a lot of universities in the US participating in this new curriculum initiative, which is totally from futuristic role of all these. And one important thing which comes out of all this product design, they say product design is going to make an important uh, impact on engineering. 
So they feel that all chemicals will go off, only specialty chemicals will come up. So future employment of chemical engineers will be in all these specialized chemical industries. So that is there. I'll spend a little time on post postgraduate, some unique features. This postgraduate education has been neglected from detailed study. So I look at the, we have a student population. The aspirants which go to the screening process not always belong to the top one. We have a screening process which could be eight. We have a student intake and knowledge transfer, same problem, same cycle. The idea here is we don't get the best of the inputs to undergraduate uh, or postgraduate program. So can we restructure the, can we sort of get better quality input into our program, sharpen our knowledge transfer process so that we can increase the brand, brand, brand value of the we always talk about brand value. Can you, can you enhance the brand value of the postgraduate student? Amazingly, India has the largest turnout of postgraduate students, the undergraduate students, with numbers I have, which I don't to say. Supply is less than the projected demand. There are quality concerns about employment, availability of active alternate options, like where they can go to IT here. Here means there are the employment or management. Uh, and they are concerned with UG. I mean, they say that we are not treated much better than a UG student in terms of place. No? And there is an employment expectation gap. I study in work, what, what do I do? I do the same thing. His gate exam has enough discriminatory component to call, characterize quality is the question which I pose. Uh, we can profile the postgraduate student as one who has knowledge, technical, both generalized as well as specialized skills, enhanced domain knowledge, skills, personal maturity and leadership, differentiate UG and PG and maybe PG, among PGs, dual degree and PG. If we cannot differentiate our, like any other system, we should be able to differentiate our, our graduates with little more precision than what we do. Uh, need for definitely a suitable outcome measure similar to the engineering criteria 2000 and protocols for machine of outcome. Here also we have a lot of options, but uh, like, you know, flexible, I would like a course of the dominant uh, uh, or research dominant. And like, the thing which I want to say is that we can also leverage a research profile. Teaching as a, two things which I want to say is, in this, is uh, IIT review committee has shot down the dual degree. They say it's not, uh, I think, IIT review committee has said dual degree may not be the best idea. Reasons not known. So, which program will be best suited for the you know, job profile? How to effectively use students and improve their skills? Tutors, you know, now if you call a tutor, he says, why I have to be tutor with something. It's better to take, take tutoring as a learning experience. A couple of my students have taken tutorship under me. Say, sir, give me as much work as I want, we'll do. Because we want to learn. I mean, if you make tutoring as a learning experience, it will be, and not as a load. In that respect, even teaching, so when some faculty said, I have got teaching load, I get a little scared. Because yeah. load is, it should be always teaching assignment and not a load. Teaching load, loads, we don't carry load. We carry assignment and responsibility. So, uh, leveraging research profile, I have been started with a mini project which I thought was inter interesting. So, enhancing value will be challenging research problems. And fast track option for the practice we should have. I had a very good student in 1977. That man was very bright. He could walk through any exam, any postgraduate exam in IIT. He somehow managed to shorten his stay here. He made a wonderful work in his, in his research part. One of the best students I met. He went through that fast track option after pulling a lot of wires here to make him go out of the Institute faster that he can work in his parent organization with his excellent process. And withdraw his name, I will not disclose the name, it was very good. He got A in everything, though he took a heavier load than all the others. And I will end my talk on whether everything in this world should get assessed. And when I take a process control class, I said a controller, process, supervisory controller, everything has to be assessed. 
I think in performance, an academic institute has also to be assessed to sort of uh, ramp calculus and interview that way, accountability. I mean, I will not worry about a pointing finger I don't want to do. We have to assess for quality to and in fact to claim for to justify claim for excellence. Another thing is achievement against set targets as per the mission, mission statement. I may have set a target, I want to know as my and third is identification avenues for improvement, capacity, capability, capacity versus actual performance. Am I doing as well as I should do given this infrastructure? Uh, usually what we do is we have some international ranking report which is published by US government report or someone so many other. This IIT Mumbai is placed some 230 or 404 or 53 and they say 53 we are happy. And I always wondered how an institution which is in, a, in this education institution has slow dynamic systems from control theory. How they suddenly jump from 3 to 8 is something which they don't, I don't understand. Because they are, they are not resident capability. How they jump from 3 to 8 is something which bothered me quite a lot. So issues is, we should examine the integrity of ranking, external ranking. What are the activities to be considered for assessment? What are the metrics to be used for performance assessment? What is the robustness of our assessment process? What are the implementation mechanism? How to project the results of ranking into meaningful performance measures? Uh, and lastly, use assessment results for performance enhancement. Education program, program we can use the philosophy Abbott approach in such a total assessment. I wrote a UNESCO report, which is if you're looking at research. Look at three parameters. Research capacity. What is the capacity to do research? Second is research quality. What are the metrics? There are all kinds of metrics, you know, like the citation, these, that, you know. And they have the third uncomfortable element, which is research utility. What is the utility of the research? I and mean, it's very uncomfortable for all of us to say that how oh, my research is useful to many of them. It's a very uncomfortable dimension. But you have to research it. As responsible, we have to say what is the extent of our research you think. Uh, X, uh, these two are quantifiable. The research productivity and quality are quantifiable to some extent. Research capacity and research capacity can also be managed, but research utility needs to be looked at in more serious. Uh, uh, it could be a service to industry, quality of service and impact. And external ranking may not look at all this. They have not set measures. Uh, now, looking at another aspect of performance, assets, lab and infrastructure. I will introduce another element. I am reading Yetsky's paper on an adaptive enterprise. He talked about assets. What is the asset of mine? Not except for lab, we have intellectual asset. We have intellectual pool of people above a critical in specific areas above a critical mass. In IIT itself, we have someone who built up excellent facility. There is no follow-up. When he goes, all the facilities die. The others don't take over. So if we have a way of sustaining this intellectual pool of mass, it's an intellectual asset. So I do the notion of an intellectual asset. asset. I do the notion of an in all organizers, there is an asset and liability. Liability, which I have told, will be lot of uh, People will look askance at me for using this a libel, and I'm probably not my graduate. What do I say? What do I say? Mention anything about unemployment of my graduate? I said I should also factor it into my analysis. If my students are unemployed, my PhD students, it's a libel and moral liability only, not on any. Because I'll say he's, he's after five years, you are no longer with me. So this is a moral liability. And second is loss of potential talent. Attention due to dropout or failure. These are performance metrics. They also have to be built in into the system. Internal available performance mechanism. I was can we put a reliable internal performance assessment system, which can look at the good understanding of the functional operational features of the system, develop an information network. IT can help in developing the network and design an assessment framework by incorporating all the features and develop performance indicator at various granulator, granularity levels. At granularity level, at this top level, this is the performance, go to individuals. 
and do it. So I feel that we need a, we need not look at external banking. If we want to look at how well we are doing, we know the processes very well. We should try to assess ours. In a true system perspective, we should assess ours and we should not allow assessors to allow others to assess. We are internally enough to assess ours. If we can do that, it is something like internal model control and in process control. If we have internal model control, we can assess ours. I think we need to assess ours. Planning for the last slide. <coughs> planning for the future. We should have a growth plan of employment. I look at a planning problem. You know, all people in college is a planning problem. A growth plan of the employment sector, not always spelled out very clearly. Profile of student output and student impact on Indian contact, not always filled out. They said very with clarity. Demand distribution of students seldom described with clarity and granularity. Resources, depending upon all this, resources requirement to meet this demand. What is the capacity expansion needed? Multiple site. Do I put an IIT in, in Kerala? I come from Kerala. I will say Kerala is the first. I am also from Bombay. So Bombay already has an IIT. So my second love is Kerala. So Another IIT in Canada, the multi-site capacity expansion, a classical OR problem, capability enhancement and constraints. On the other side, so it's a it's a moving, it's a horizon problem. 2006, we are the past. The tuck professor will say, forget about the past. And Govindra will say, forget about the past. I think we cannot forget about the past. That's the liability we have. You know, manpower shortfall, capacity constraint, capability gap, student population aspiration, that's on one side. The other side is the need, it has to be realistically assessed and put. And like a planning problem, looking at the past and planning for the future. Uh, planning objectives could be, what is the planning objective? Technical manpower development, economic growth, or the triple mantra with Deveshwar. Technical education, social cost, that let me educate everyone, whether they are employed or not is my, not my concern. Global outreach, all this I think system concept, concept is useful for problem formulation. Complex problem is how to tackle it. Systems can formulate the problem. Formulating the problem is always interesting. Treating is a little more, sounding is a little more difficult. Concluding remark. Now we always talk about inclusive, they are very inclusive. So inclusive education, engineering education, drive off our economic growth. When I say inclusive, it tries to absorb the interest of all. Systems approach can have a holistic view, can have variety. You know, cybernetics, they say that the system which controlled should have greater variety than the system which it is controlling. So our education system has requisite variety to provide that kind of an input to this. Uh, Assessment of performance of all activities, development of measures to enhance brand value of those programs which need that kind of An internal performance mechanism as a conscience keeper, and it's a conscience keeper, literally, to strive for better performance, the systems use. Systems approach can help in realizing the goals of an adaptive institute of learning. We, should, we have to be an adaptive institute of learning, so you have to sort of put the systems concept now I have to acknowledge, IIT has sheltered me for, it's under its benevolent roof for a long period. They, sometimes they are confused when they are still working or they are retired. I mean, I, I, they seem to be all around moving here and there. Chemical engineering for its magnanimity, for keeping in its family. We talked about asset and liability, whether as a permanent asset or a liability. <laughs> Faculty and staff of IIT want to. My students, the generation of my students has always been well wishes. Mr. Samir Banerjee, I mean, he's missing, I mean, for a long time. <coughs> Mr. Ajit Gopal Das has that persuasive skill. He said, he asked me to talk, I will talk. If he had persuaded to sing, maybe, though I don't know how to sing, maybe I would have sung. <laughs> <laughs> Ultimately, these thoughts of ideas of someone who has dealt with education as a faculty, not as an expert who sat from above the bottom up view of someone who has dirty design in education. Not a top down view of an expert who has sat and who has worked for the director or you know, secretary of someone. So mind may be a little naive, something silly to senility. If I 
in Sydney, I'm 69, so anything that I say out of front, I can say it's celebrity. But I say all this with all my sincerity and passion for a very good education system for tomorrow. Thank you very much for that.